16 of my 2022 Christmas Village full tutorial series. Part 16 is traditionally the part where I do the gathering. But what is the gathering at least for me? Is when I pick up all the building boxes and place all the buildings I want for a certain season randomly on the layout. Then I spent the next 10 to 12 hours uh, deciding where I want them, sliding them to the left, to the right, on the third level, on the first level, uh, trying to get an almost decent uh, look, an almost decent village look, and then proceed with that. But this season I'm way behind, far, too far behind schedule, so I will not do that. I will simply uh, pick up a couple, maybe three buildings in order to have a minimum start of a gathering, especially the train station that the only spot available I have this year is on the far left of the layout where I have some holes near the, ra uh, the railroad to place the station. And then the boats, because I will also need a little dock, a little wharf and a ladder to access uh, the boats. Yes, way behind schedule. And then, oh guys, look what I find, what I finally find out. It was hidden behind the giant uh, Poseidon statue, so I couldn't find it. But the knife thrower is alive. And it is here, guys. I will place it uh, next to his assistant there. A mysterious building disappeared, but as I promised, I have finished it. Then some uh, modification on the circus gate already done. I will show you why, what, how, etc. Missing the buildings here, the props here. I will show you. It will be time to start the zerg. Yes. Three, yes, I do three like that because I'm in Europe, otherwise you do guys like that. Uh, the third uh, feature, the third Victorian era um, novelist feature back there, maybe near the mysterious building. And then I will get uh, to work on the next level, the walls, and trying to attach a, a maximum. Uh, let's get to action, into action, sorry, with, by presenting you the final aspect of the mysterious building. Ta-da! <laughs> the mysterious building is finally done, complete, finished, finito, se finire. Um, in part 15, I left you with the roof. I just uh, use some uh, clay, some modeling clay and uh, my roller to model and cut the four parts I will need to complete the roof. One, two, three and four here on the sides. Then I needed at least a 24 hour of drying time. After that I, uh, I assembled uh, the four parts here one, two, three, and four, with some PVC glue on the sides there and on the main border. And then I sealed the junction with some extra uh, modeling clay all along the, uh, the, con con the junction section here. And then a big chunky piece of uh, modeling clay on top of the roof, modeled Mm, roughly because this is supposed to be very very ancient i also did the same thing for the um for the two little uh, roofs there that i intended to cover uh, what is in uh, under it so uh, this little porch here uh, you see them as they are very dirty because this is ancient so i also complete it because they were too orange to um, uh, to uh, clean 
and the roofs were too clean so I completed with uh, addiction of some and black uh, wash uh, just a little of black paint of black acrylic paint and then a lot of water and then apply the that gets on the roofs they are the, the roof is old dirty uh, when it, it's raining and the chimney because I also added a couple of chimney are spitting in the air some wood smoke then the water tend to to sparse the uh, ashes uh, on the on the on the roof that's why the reason I have not a very clean uh, roof but I wanted it like that uh, Limax and Limax roofs are always dark you don't get that impression but roofs are not clean guys so then guys a lot of things doors I added for, those were already printed guys I just needed to uh, paint them and put them where I needed them I glued them here in this position of open there one or one door here a double door here a uh, square double door here one on the right and one on the left with some gold or so it will be more much more clear when i will do the final recap and show you everything the main entrance there guys hope you can see the main entrance with the two braziers one here and one there maybe i will go closer guys let's so the two braziers are one there and one there okay with the main front door with some gold uh, parts etc half open these two half open these two okay guys and uh, the two braziers are working uh, underneath it where are some of the wires I dig some holes, then use it as some tape to mask them. Those are the two uh, wires, the two from the braziers. Then some more for mm, the torches. All the wires are coming in the back there, and then I've joined them like that. I haven't done a uh, um, uh, um, a connection using a PCB as I did for the um, Frankenstein feature, Mary Shelley Frankenstein feature, but this is how I did because I had too many wires. Then from the other side, another door, guys, another couple of doors with a mistake from me. This is the square door to access. To access, sorry, the. Uh, the f second uh, floor, the second story from the outside stair, and then this door here. It is a little banded because this was supposed to be on the back there after this gallery here, because here we have the gallery. But <laughs> I noticed it once the roof was in already glued and in place, so n no way for me to access and the far side this wall here this is the gallery from here to there and then the door should have been on this wall here just under this this door here no way for me to access that right spot from the outside so the door is there from the back guys from the back guys i added the two more uh, wall torches i told you that i wanted to add the two more two more wall torches and then a couple of chimneys guys uh, everything is covered with bricks everything the front you already uh, you already seen me doing the front because some months ago <laughs> i made the front but then i painted everything with what i wanted then i also did the two sides with bricks and then the back side the only part where i have a big uh, a big section of uh, uh, styrofoam and not those little bricks is this because i have too many junction with the wires so i needed to cover it with some flat uh, flat uh, long piece of 
styrofoam but this helped me adding some more uh, depth to the building with this wall here and made it ruined then to differentiate the chimney I did some uh, brown ma maroon I think yes it is called maroon very red brown here on some of the bricks to to get you the look that those chimney are different construction are a different piece the two I already told you about the two uh, wall torches and then everything is painted using some black wash then some gray different shade of gray from dark to light then some green and some brown on the walls here just the grays different shades of gray and then some red for those bricks there and everything is done i also painted the styrofoam that i had for support uh, for the um, clay support with some almost the same color as a clay and by the way you get it mixing some orange with some pink you get that uh, brick color that um, tiles color roof tiles color is made mixing orange and pink the under under the building i will not paint it anyway it will be either and that's it guys uh, you can see the different uh, uh, balusters and the different everything now you are wondering uh, also i uh, left I, I keep the uh, main columns there white as a marble should be always white okay always precious marble do it work guys do the all the World torches work will be they in sync or will I have a good looking effect? I will switch it on with simply a 3 volt AC adapter and voila guys voila guys you can see now in real life it's way better but you can appreciate that they are not in sync guys and they will lose sync in some way uh, the backs are flickering in another way and you can see them through the windows that the torches are flickering in a different way also here in the front uh, the it all depends on the length of the wire so the f I haven't the same wire lengths, so they get uh, intensity and current and electricity in different ways. Then the first they get starts and then get there. The two brazier aren't flickering at the same uh, rhythm, nor the two front uh, uh, torches than the side torches. And look inside, guys, the effect from every side. You can see that the torches are flickering inside and everything is visible even through the little door you can see some scene through the little door there half open little door and from the front side you get everything and then from the other windows too and here you have the stair visible on the um, of, um, uh, to the to the to the door and everything is working guys not a translucent and i've tested it in plain dark maybe it is too bright maybe you get the impression that the building is on fire by night but the two braziers are illuminating with just two braziers all the porch there so guys Mysterious building is done. I will not reveal the name. You will have to wait for the end of this part uh, 16 and I have told everything concerning this Building guys this mysterious building that it took me almost the same time as the Dome as the three ring circles. Uh, I will continue with 
it's something else. <laughs> well, guys, the cutting mat is dirtier and dirtier with each part and each time more damage ruined, but it's supposed to be like uh, that. Let's talk about the stairs. The stairs that will grant access from the Jules Verne feature, from the level with the Jules Verne features to the three ring circus level. And last time I told you at the end that of part 15 that my printer was printing some of the elements needed for this stair to be functional. I also told you that it will be a modular stair that can be implemented for any kind of eight from 3 cm up to uh, 12, 24, 50 cm. Don't care, it's modelable. Just simply add some eight to the design. I modeled it uh, as a steampunk would be, uh, but it is industrial, it is old, it is modern all together. Uh, it has been modeled, I modeled it and 3D printed, but you can achieve this with simply using also some styrofoam, it doesn't care, but I wanted something uh, that someone else uh, made, <laughs> my printer, my filament 3D printer, and by the way, if you are hearing some noise in the background, is my... Um, a resin printer that is printing a new type of fences for the mysterious building and I will be quiet on that. So, the main design guys is like that. Okay, It's simply a transformation of what I already modeled for the uh, Jules Verne feature for the uh, 20,000 leagues under the sea uh, feature. With the, this time a C-shaped profile, this is a C-shaped profile going from this level and then having this shape. I painted it using some light blue, I think the right name is teal, teal blue and then as the Jules Fitus is, but this time I added more copper uh, to the airbrush with the fourth layer. Two, four layers. One primer, then teal, then blue, yes, teal or blue, then a couple of layers of uh, blue, and then some um, copper. That always clogged my airbrush because it's very thick. And, but this is the result inside and outside. And this is the profile. So this is the stair. First level. The second level will be the same, guys. But it will place it uh, like that. This will be more, uh, more evident when I will do the placing on the, on the layout. So this is from ground zero to 12 centimeters. This has an height of 12 centimeters. The next level has a step, but it also has some space in there. Let me take something to show you. Here has space to get some light under the steps. And then when this will be up there, you will get this effect here, hope you can see, with also some sort of gallery here. This will be against the main wall, the main wall, this side here will be against the main wall of uh, the side of the main wall. And this is intended to be a wall, a secondary wall, to get the stair turning and not wasting too much length to get it from 0 to 12 centimeters, otherwise I would have this length here to get access. But like this way I get some new stairs 
more durable because I can get there let me add the other elements there and each time you add one more step like that you can see that you have one more step always the same eight it's like having this little profile here from here to there then each time you add some eight up and some eight down because this second here is like having like that or maybe like that okay it's like I added something under and then cut something from the top it's always 12 centimeters in the end that I'm playing with 12 centimeters but this is the full length then what I did is taking some centimeters each time and shortening this and instead getting this taller and taller the steps taller and taller the effect is like that and this is you can see from this here is two and a half centimeters here and each time sorry I don't have my normal ruler with me so each time two and a half centimeters here and then each time I go up the steps are one centimeter here the step is one centimeter here and then here you are two centimeters okay each time I go up one centimeter and go down one centimeter so here I went up one centimeter from here and went down one centimeter from here to there and here too you have the same effect this is visible under the step this is also visible under the step let me go ahead and do the entire stairs at the center point I have a turning point there then each time I'm reaching where you have the same aid from one side to the other like that and this is almost there so if I go up one centimeter here and I will go down one centimeter or just one centimeter from one side I get this so they are leveled now so I just went up one centimeter here I leveled this at this level here and then I wanted something panoramic so I add two more sections two more modular section there or modular following the same C section there it's like having a little C section going down then left then up okay very simple modeling if you know some 3d software and that was in just normally you get access with this module to 12 centimeters in just 16.5 centimeters those doesn't count because i already reached the point where you get the turning point there and you go up there then from the other side I will add this long section here because now I can because it's not uh, horizontal uh, here I have the gate the circus gate guys so those are intended to be the panoramic view for the circus gate okay so up 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 panoramic view here i have the train coming out from the gallery and getting a, a curve there and then the train getting here 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 all along this is panoramic then up circus gate under here i have those five centimeters here i have five centimeters guys that can be used underneath it to 
to have uh, some roof and some attractions or some park bench covered by this roof here in front of the uh, no on the side of the uh, Jules Verne 20,000 leagues under the sea feature. This will be like that, guys. And I will show you the effect of the gallery here. It's a beautiful gallery you have here. I will show you with the final recap when I can move the camera around. And everything is painted differently because it's for me, it's like everything is copper. Everything is copper like a, a, a steampunk um, construction should be then painted with some blue but then when people get access to everything the paint stand starts to get ruined to get um, to get away to wash away so some copper still visible yes you are telling me here you have the styrofoam uh, wall but here people tend to fall down and also here and also here here not because you have the wall and also here people could fall down correct you are right i miss some uh hand rays and balusters correct guys let me check the camera go oh, it's running correctly uh yes this is modular so you can get there you can add with the same um, with the same technique some more towards 20, 24 centimeters getting there uh, or maybe you can just finish it a little lower no that doesn't need to be 12 centimeters you can design it very simply very easily this way and you can do balusters guys here i have the balusters the white is where i want it them to get. Same design but this time not with the c-section sorry guys I know that c-section is something else uh, also but in uh, mechanics in mechanical terms it is called a section. Here you have an eye section okay here it is an eye section the same principle I made a simple eye design and then extruded it in top those can be placed like that with double-sided tape and i will do that all along the stairs okay and now i will go one here and one there then you can have them like that and then you can go with the opposite ways sorry guys I needed to use double sided tape like that and manage them. You can see the principle there, but you can go like that. And here too, from this side too, they are a little narrower than 2.5 centimeters. I made them 2.3 centimeters, so one millimeter from each side. And you couldn't go there. So Hand rails because those are hand rails for me. Here you can grab them and go uh, up with some plain metal steampunk design. You have some uh, space in between them to look at people getting up, not completely close, but with some um, free air, free space between them and it will get a very particular effect and those are balusters and hand rays going over and over all along here uh, also those are modular and uh, maybe you can go like that if you want if you prefer getting access so to something strange balusters having a certain angle there uh, as you want or maybe towards the, the opposite way one from one side and one from the other side to get some crazy look like that you aren't blocked with some particular design then you can go once again straight then once again 
or maybe you can go different ways like that but this is too much space so then you can go like that or you can go like that and the particular design here is when you have some some corners like in this case you can go this way protecting the corner or you can go with some more space like that okay uh, having some space it's up to you it's modular guys uh, it's up to me obviously but this is uh, also same painting technique blue um, primer then after an hour one layer of blue chill mix not simply blue but i mix it uh, blue teal with iridescent silver to get a metallic look already with the blue the teal blue then a layer of a very uh, soft layer very sparse layer of a copper and you don't have one that is painted as the other because it's irregular spraying irregular air brushing okay guys i simply know where is top and bottom because here is where they were glued to some support in order to get them uh, painted and them dried and without problems um, some little problems in the filament printing for some elements there but I or there but I don't care this is supposed to be old and also a little secret this was too big for uh, for having uh, a one piece uh, printed so I printed them separately cutting them in half then use some of my five minutes uh, um, resin uh, glue to get them together then roughly here I uh, filed the, um, the, uh, the, the glue but this is supposed to be soldered and so on so this was too big for any for at least for my uh, filament printer uh, I will uh, go and place it right now showing you the result I will use some double sided tape and by the way I have some new uh, some new double sided tape that is very uh, sorry guys, yes, that is very 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 thin just three millimeters or two millimeters I don't know it is written here. This is three millimeters um, wide double-sided tape transparent double-sided tape. This will avoid me um, having to cut this double-sided tape in small sections in order to get it under here on the and it, this will be useful also for my canal fences because each time I use this double sided tape and then cut some stripes some li some very narrow stripes but this is just three millimeters double sided tape uh, just found it on, on one of the Christmas door not the one you have seen last week not uh, at Peraga, but the other one where I generally buy the uh, rock paper and it was there. So I will switch to the other camera and show you uh, how I will place them. Uh, double sided tape here, double sided tape there and then place them one beside the other. I will not use some double sided tape here because I don't want to damage these modular, uh, those modules. Okay? Uh, hope uh, you like this new uh, stair or uh, yes ancient yes modern yes uh, not that modern because otherwise I will you I will have used some not squared corners but modern design tends to get rounded designs there so adding some round corners there but this is industrial this is a steampunk this is victorian era design but if you want them for some other uh, project you have that is very modern you simply need to round the 
coolness. Okay, and you get a 2021-2022 design. Sorry guys, let's continue. Good, now let's do the stairs. Let's build the stairs that will be placed starting from this point here. Okay, starting from here. So, double side of tape. Now guys, unfortunately I have some, once more some sad news, sorry for that guys. Jay, my companion, my 2022 companion, died suddenly. Jay here died suddenly. Let me explain. This is a 3D printing, this is something I modeled five to six months ago. Then if you do, do something wrong, like not allowing it correctly, what is allowing? It's when, in order to not waste too much resin, if you have a cylinder, a plain cylinder, a plain rod, you make some holes into it in order to get only 
the perimeter, only the walls of this cylinder and not getting it completely full of resin, completely covered and filled with resin, uh, you risk to make errors, such as not inclining correctly the model before printing and allowing the resin that will be trapped inside to flow away from the inside model. This is not a plain model, guys. The legs are not plain. The legs have holes inside. I just have the walls here too, the, the, the arm, except for the end. The arm is empty inside. I just have the walls, the head too. It's not, otherwise I, this will be, the cost of this figurine will be exaggerated for the purpose and it's not that heavy. But when you do like such things and you have some resin trapped inside after some months you will get this result guys. Please look uh, please look if you can there. It has completely cracked and the resin, I just cleaned it, but the resin is dripping out of him. It has cracked all along here and you can see the grey. And look guys, I have still some resin, you can see, dripping. Let me just clean my hands because the resin is not that safe. But it has still some resin trapped inside that with the heat and the time uh, and it expand and it, it it's like some boiling water at some time it will crack the resin and it has cracked all along here you have sorry you have all along the perimeter that it has cracked guys the arm is completely uh, cracked in half under the coat you have all the cracks and so here too there with the resin I just show you and then the belt has cracked generally you have this effect or motors can also explode explode from the inside and so J died abruptly for an error I made. The error was not uh, after this because, uh, uh, for example, um, my ring master uh, was oriented differently. This was oriented like that, if this is horizontal, this was oriented like that, not that much. But my ring master was printed upside down, obviously, but with a uh, another angle, almost 90 degrees angle, so the the resin um, uh, flow correctly uh, of, of it, then I made some little holes in where it is not visible in order to drip it, in order to uh, empty it from, from resin before painting it. But my mistake was I forgot to do it with my J there. So J died, but don't worry guys. Uh, I still add the, the, uh, the model. I still add the files. So I reprinted it guys. And this time I haven't uh, already assembled the base because I wanted to show you the hole, yes, it's not a proper position for a hole, guys, but here you have a big hole this time going from a scratch, guys, up to the head. And I left this dripping out for one night before painting it. But now inside you have no more resin inside, still need to and uh, to do some uh, gloss, some uh, some medium gloss. And the difference, guys, is essentially that uh, I generally do not basic colors, not standard colors, but I mix. 
colors. I mix uh, red and silver, iridescent silver, black and blue, etc. It's very difficult to get the same shades of colors when you did this, because I don't use standard colors. So you may have some different shades of colors in J, in, in sorry, uh, this will be called the JJ from now on, sorry, J died, but I have JJ there. <laughs> sorry, guys. And the only thing I did was changing the color, trying to go darker with some black and the iridescent silver for the goggles, for the glasses, because those were too, uh, too great, too, sorry, I, uh, the resin is coming out and it's still dripping. Uh, so I have uh, my fingers. So I was saying the goggles are now black and with some mix of iridescent silver in order to shine a little bit. And the hairs are somehow more white. Uh, so I've used uh, some um, light uh, gray this time. No, it's almost the gray, but I added a much more white with the uh, dry brushing. And the rest is almost the same color, but not exactly the same color, guys. Sorry for that. And I will do a funeral <laughs> to Jay, uh, because right now uh, my hands are stick with resin. I needed to wash them, uh, but luckily I always use uh, water washable, so I just simply needed to get it uh, uh, some water into uh, a container, then wash them in the container with not with simply water and soap and not uh, IPA, isopropylic alcohol, as other resin will um, will uh, will ask. Uh, so I will not damage or. Oops, ruin my hands with some IPA. Uh, JJ is now my new companion. Oh, one last thing. Uh, oops. Uh, I, for, yes, the base is here, guys. The same base. You can see that it is the same base because the more I... I always keep all the models and with all the bases, I will uh, glue it. I will glue JJ on top of the new base and then add some color. Big problem, guys. The power cord. I'm so dumb. I haven't uh, thought about the power cord that need to be hidden somehow. I'm really dumb, guys. I must find a solution for the power cord right now.
Good. Here I am once again with my dirty hands. Oh, this is strange. This is, I think, yes, inkjet printer ink. <laughs> and then I also have some gold paint on my coat. Need to wash it. Dessert. New feature. Dedicated to a Victorian era novelist. This will be a terrifying structure, a terrifying building. This will not be illuminated, I will not get any light inside. This will be pure building, strange building, and with something on the top, very terrifying, plus a prop in front of it. But this will be terrifying, guys, I know it. I prepared some pieces of styrofoam, uh, extruded the styrofoam as always, this is uh, 6.4 millimeters thick, everything is 6.4 millimeters thick, okay, uh, except this is expanded the styrofoam because I don't have the, uh, some uh, extruded styrofoam this thick, I would have to uh, glue together multiple 9 millimeters pieces, but uh, useless because anyway this will be covered by some giant bricks giant stone bricks. This will be the front, this will be the back, then I will add the sides there. I will glue them like that. Obviously I will need to cut some slope because I need this to be flat. Then some roof and then something in front, like, like that, I think. Okay, this will be like that. Some sort, this will be revealing, guys, of pyramid. Strange, terrifying pyramid with something, with something I printed six months ago on top of it. Let's go, let's have some music and let me assemble this. Good, good, good. Here we have the bricks. They are much bigger than what I used for the everything else for the mysterious building, etc. Those were one by two, one centimeter by two centimeters. Those are three centimeters by two centimeters. Uh, they are not in two to one um, scale, but anyway, I will add them. I will start adding them here 
and I will start the, from the front here. So let's see what I can achieve with that. Good, I did everything for the for the bricks and now I will need to do something strange here with the roof here. I marked here something that uh, is a secret for now. I play I place something lately. But I will just paint this. Good. I have here some strange things. Okay. I also have very dirty hands. Two sets. Very no, let me clean my hands before proceeding. Okay, not perfect, but better than before. Okay, I was saying very dangerous, spiky things. This, if you are into uh, Victorian era novelist. It will give up what it is that is a little bit complicated, but those will be spiky, dangerous. But please, uh, and I've uh, printed those with my mm, resin printer, then three coats of uh, um, iridescent silver, then some gloss. Please. Look at them closely and you will notice some strange holes, some strange cuts in here. This one, as all the others, will be a whistling horn. Okay? I've said too much. Whistling horn. Uh, I will place them in a strange way
this simple feature here with addition of some a li little medium prop in the front is the pure essence of a very known novel from Victorian era that novelist was a genius at least for me per pure genius and I will not tell you anything more but if you are into this novelist into this writer here if you know he is yes I already told you that he is uh, uh, him so he is Words, this will reveal everything. Uh, that's all, guys. I will not continue for this week with this. I still need a couple of doors here, and then I will paint it from the outside, yellowish and black, as I did here, and this is all final recap of part 16 and i will start from the arbor there i am sorry guys but in july yes in july when i built the arbor i yes marked the perimeter of the two boats in order to remember where i need to place them but i completely forgot that the golden eagle there had a power cord so I had to dismantle the back there, cutting some space in the sea uh, in the seabed to allow the power cord to get behind the wall, and then in the middle of the journey section of the two pieces of styrofoam there. Uh, then I also had too much gray perimeter around the boat, so I had to paint everything once again blue and green but instead of using some more uh, crystal clear silicone to simulate the waves there i simply used this bottle here guys this is uh, not not this one sorry guys um, yes this one the red one the extra gloss finish uh, this is used for getting extra gloss um, surface on the on my figurines. Uh, I started using this, then I uh, decided to go with some medium gloss for my figurines. But I, I still have this pure uh, gloss, extra gloss finished, and it is like having water. I don't know if you can see under the uh, under the boat, but with the um, this finish, this clear, uh, this. Um, uh, gloss finish uh, it's resemble water guys even here where I can pull up the boat the the, <clears throat> the gloss finish there uh, up uh, on top of the paint of the blue and the green paint uh, is doing his job of simulating some more additional water now i still need to build a little bridge to get access from one side to the other side of the arbor there then some uh, docks some wharf here to get up here or maybe from the other side and a big uh, wharf docks there to get access there the train station it's oops it's a blue stain um it's the only available spot for my train station. All the railroads, all the remaining uh, rails are under the styrofoam. And from this side here, from the front side, I have <laughs> no space at all for the uh, train station. So it was the only spot available. Luckily, it will sweep the space and I still have some more space to add some stairs there or uh, something extra in here and there. Then I completed here with joining uh, this I also had some more 
styrofoam there as a support, a glue, and then some skewers there. Um, the wall, uh, you have seen me adding the wall all along the third level. Then, you know that I use uh, features that, add, that have movements to attract the attention of the viewers. Uh, and I have two problems with this year layout. Where to place the lake, the pond there, the skating pond, and you know that I always dig in the styrofoam. I um, cut all around the perimeter and then dig in three to, three to four centimeters in order to have the pond at the same level as the styrofoam. I don't like features like that uh, on top of the styrofoam. No, guys, this needs to be at the same level as the styrofoam. And I wasn't certain if placing it here or there or on the other level, uh, etc. Or then the only spot available for me. Yes, this is some sort of movement because the mm, the plasma ball there is attracting attention. But this is the other spot. I was thinking of adding the windmill there. But I changed my mind. I will add the windmill there in the corner there. There I will add the windmill. So this will attract the attention. The skating pond will be there. And then uh, no other place for me, guys. This is not suited because I already have this attraction. This level here, no, because I have the stairs too large. I will need some more buildings. So the only spot available for me is that or on the, oops, I will not go there <laughs> or on the other side, but no guys, I will have it there. Second problem, I have a Heaton Cove uh, seaside building, but I don't have seaside. I don't have a lake. I don't have a sea. I will need to figure out something. Or my first intention was to enlarge the pond there to have a big giant lake. But I am still uncertain of that. Maybe I will have to renounce to my, uh, to my building. Then guys, let's go towards the circus. The stairs, guys. This is the look I wanted. The gallery there, guys. I also have a gallery there. This is what I meant with the gallery. And uh, it, here it is, maybe I can place a, a, um, a park bench or something else here. And this will be as a roof for everything there. I know, maybe I have sacrificed five more centimeters in here but these needed to go there. So the stairs are now like that. And you can see through here and you can see the train arriving when you walk towards the stairs uh, from the horse there, you will see the train arriving. And then also maybe I will go this way, guys. You will see the train on the, on the railroad far behind there when it is on the curve. And this is suited for some people getting it through there or maybe for having some uh, stores or something like that. I like, I sincerely like, please comment if you like these new modular stairs, guys. And look who, who I have here. JJ. Hi, JJ. Welcome to the new rip to your twin J. I modified the gate there. One of your comments was, okay, guy, okay, yes, but the wire it was there, uh, getting down, visible, no way to hide it. So what I did, I uh, opened it, then I made a hole, a vertical hole. Uh, maybe I can show you, but you have seen it when I was working 
the hole is in here. Uh, then the wire gets around following the coil and, and then I painted it copper. So now, if I don't point it at you, you will never tell that I have the wire here all around the coil and it's here. But then I will dig a hole here and the wire will disappear. Then one other comment was, hey guys, you are, hey, but you have a, a switch there. How to add it? I, my answer was, maybe I will add some kind of chimney because this is steampunk, steam need a chimney somewhere. And it is working on, off, on, off. And it's simply a pipe, an L-shaped pipe, and I glued it there with some um, uh, with some glue it can still get uh, uh, around uh, it can still turn around but uh, i will be able to remove inside the hole i put, i added some uh, milliput it is a uh, epoxy compound a mix you have to mix two uh, two epoxy uh, um, compound and then it gets it hard then guys, look what I have here. Plenty of balloons. I have the six, the six ones, and then I have the three ones there. And not a single one is identical to the other. I modified each time the colors. So here you have this combination here, and then, yes, you have also here the pink, but then you have the orange that it is absent in here. So I made all those balloons and I will add them in strategic points. Ticket boots, guys. I needed a ticket boot. And please look inside. My lady, my ticket lady there is sitting there. I painted her. her as um, Alice in Wonderland, the same color that Alice in Wonderland had, and I painted her like that. Then I 3D printed some uh, some sign there, tickets, it is in 3D, and then I painted it with some uh, gold and then some copper for the little tiny points there. Vivid colors, or the bases are uh, wood, and then I went with uh, this combination of vivi colors and uh, gold on the on the borders there. A ticket boot is imperative; it's necessary in every circus. So the ticket boots, the tickets boot is near the entry. Then Madame Zaza and her tent, guys. Sorry, I have no time to paint the table, but also the tent here, even inside, guys. Vivid colors, uh, red, blue, gold, uh, not exactly the same color as Madame Zaza, the fortune teller there, but I will have her near her tent there. And I was thinking to have some sort of uh, uh, fixed parkour, or fixed uh, uh, road there with uh, uh, some strip, red strip maybe, getting towards the axis of the circus but allowing people to pass through the attractions that will be there the training attractions there then the other lady guys i painted the other lady also that will be uh, managing uh, this booth here i still don't know what to put inside maybe some a duck with hook, so fish the duck, something very carnival, very circus uh, oriented, uh, timid. And then another booth there. Uh, still different colors, they are orange, there is blue, purple, green, a combination of all the color I have in the three ring circus. This will be another booth with something else, guys. And this. Uh, balloons, I will add the balloons, maybe one here, another there. Uh, I went from designing, from modeling the balloons that I have for my 
uh, clown, my evil clown, that I wasn't very satisfied uh, with the shape of the balloons to this shape here with the three balloons. Then finally I experimenting, I think this is the correct shape of the balloons that balloons need to have. Okay, uh, anyway, this is, oh, oh, inside the circus guys, finally the knife thrower is there throwing knives to her assistant guys. EPIA guys, I was, uh, I, 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 pff, I don't know why I, I haven't seen it before. And the stairs are all uh, with two centimeter with uh, two centimeter steps. They can be climbed um, with every single figurine, guys. This those this is the largest I have because my bases are very large, but the standard uh, figurines will also fit. Even Madame Zaza can fit there and can climb the stairs. And the balusters, the handrail with balusters, maybe they are too short. I don't know, guys. I don't think they are too short because they allow you to see through the three people climbing the stairs. And they prevent also people from falling down like that, guys. Uh, I don't think they are uh shorter than the canal fences let me take some i still have around here uh one canal fence yes i have here the canal fence and i will place the canal fence there and they are almost the same eight guys the ballast uh, the end rails is at the same eight uh, yes i have those little protruding there but they are not functional they are the same eight as the canal fences that i have as a standard measure for my fences and then guys let me do this okay guys this is from the distance, the mysterious building. <laughs> I will tell you the name or what it is in my outro, guys. Not a minute before. But look at the torches there. They are not flickering uh, synchronously, okay? Especially from the side, guys. They are all different. Maybe I will, sh um, <clears throat> I will switch off the lights. Uh, let me go with, let me adjust the camera like that. Uh, I diminish the ISO of the camera and I will switch off the lights. And look, <laughs> it, I don't need any, any street lights, street lamps. I don't need any of them from the distance. Uh, the mysterious building is able to illuminate an entire, uh, an entire neighbor, guys. And this is the effect in plain night maybe too too much lights yes but just think uh, on how big this monster is two and a half time a uh, normal building uh, let me place near it my train station that is a huge building a very wide building let me go there it is a very wide building and a very tall, not the tallest one, but look how small it's the train station. 
in front of the mysterious building and it is way more taller than the mysterious building. So that's the reason why I needed so many lights and it will bring lights even to the North Pole section guys. But anyway, what is done is done. Yes, I can uh, disconnect some of the wires, but I don't want guys. I don't want. Uh, maybe I will simply need to add a little resistor uh, before getting the electricity, the current to the um, to the LED there. But I will no, not do that. That's my monster building, and it will be serial, guys. Next season, I will add some more gigantic building. I still have a crazy idea to go. I will not tell you because I'm too crazy, guys. Let me switch on all the lights once again. Okay, guys, I will take the mic. Okay, and ISO to auto. Sorry, guys, I to auto. Okay, then last thing, guys, let me approach the new building there. There. This will be, as I told you, a frightening building. If you are a fan of the novelist that wrote the book that inspired me with this little building here, let's say that this is a pyramid, guys, a uh, cut pyramid. If you are a fan of this novelist, you already figure out the novelist and the title of the book. Very famous, <laughs> at least for me. Spiky whistling horns. This is giving all up, guys. I will have some disturbing, frightening, evil, think on top of this and I will reveal it next week because next week will be one day before Halloween <laughs> so I think I will I will end this building and this will be the dessert feature by next week and the fourth feature will be under the North Pole section inside the cave there but i think it will be revealed not until the last day before closing everything i already started working because i had the platform there i will insert a platform inside i already started working on it but it will be a surprise and it will be the craziest thing i ever had to one of my Christmas villages, guys. So, this will need at least the doors. Then I will have a little prop in front of it. One last thing, guys. All around the mysterious building, I will use a new type of fence, guys. This one. <laughs> the resin printer is printing the gates right now. This is the wall. I wanted something that um, prevent people to getting access to the mysterious building as some medieval times would be. But I didn't want some walls because I, I, it, it would have meant keeping everything behind walls nothing will uh, will have been uh, seen from the outside let me go 
and this is almost a symmetrical guys from one side and from the other side the little difference there is the little slope i have on the top of the uh, of the fences the fences there will go like that and i will go from the front view guys and from the front view the fences will be like that so you can see through the fences let me get some help from JJ and you will be also able to see people from the outside like that and it has the right aid to prevent people to get to jump <laughs> over the fences but you can also see people that are inside i know th th this should have been at least two to three centimeters taller at least this height there at least i didn't want something that full just remember that figurines are always uh, in a in a larger scale than the buildings so even jj here is taller than the doors so getting the same scale uh, also for the Lemax buildings figurines are, are always taller than the uh, than the doors so the fence here is relatively uh, in scale with the doors so imagine that if j is taller than a door then j is also taller than a fence that means that the fence is at least uh, at the same age as a door so three meters uh, three meters and then three meters and 20 centimeters in some cases so this is a tall fence I will have some rounded section here getting around a gate in front here with some sort of doors and these will go all around all around the perimeter new type of fence three days of modeling this is insane guys modeling such a fence modeling this fence um keep in mind that i wanted something that a uh, steampunk and this is victorian and steampunk at the same time it's crazy it's crazy uh, trying to model is something that will be able to be printed by a 3d printer three days of three nights of modeling guys so that's real all for this part 16 uh, i hope uh, i've shown you some progress and uh, from now on i will uh, progress more quickly you have seen that once the stairs the circus stairs uh, are, were done i can do uh, very quickly all the remaining uh, things part 17 will be uh, dedicated maybe to some more building to adding some more buildings and to go on but the very long tasks are now finished guys and so see you in just some seconds for my outro where i will reveal the name of that mysterious building it is always sad to say goodbye to a companion i know i'm not a doctor who and i don't have a blue phone box that can travel in space and time but i silvio too have companions and luckily for me it is 2022 and cloning is possible so rest in peace jay and welcome jj and even part 16 has come to an end so please don't forget to subscribe oh the mysterious building right there in the back that mysterious building is nothing more nothing else than a scriptorium 
scriptorium were buildings used by monks in the Middle Ages to perform copy, uh, to perform book copying, to perform book duplicating. That's the way they use it in Middle Ages to diffuse the knowledge, to pass knowledge from one convent, one scriptorium to another. I possess a book, I am a monk, I will and copy it letter by letter, then keep one copy, then give the other copy, not the original, to another monk that will travel many, many, many miles to give it to another, maybe, uh, church, another scriptorium. But this was not entirely dedicated to cloning, to copying, to duplicating um, a religious book. Every kind of books that was published, that was printed, that was written in Middle Ages and written, was duplicated like that. That's why I always said that this building was involved with knowledge. It has nothing to do with religion, it has all to do with the diffusion of knowledge. That's why I love scriptoriums. Please don't forget to subscribe, comment and give big thumbs up. Thank you for watching, thank you for bearing my absolutely awful English and see you next time but only if you wish. Bye guys.